Hi, my name is Malcolm Roach, and today I'm going to discuss how you can manage long-term maintenance requirements for both company-owned and customer equipment. You may hear me use the term plan maintenance today. Others may refer to it as preventative maintenance or even preventive maintenance, but it's all the same thing. The idea is that you're looking ahead, figuring out what long-term maintenance requirements are. When I say long-term, that couldn't be as little as every three months. So this is just managing that process. So in our system, in order in any system, frankly, to manage service requirements, you have to be able to track individual units. Okay, so we're going to add a new service unit for a skid steer. We'll click on the plus service unit. The system can assign the next number or you can put them in manually. And now we just type in a skid steer loader. So this can be as specific as you want. Maybe it's got wheels, maybe it's got a track on, that's up to you. And a serial number, of course, can be whatever the actual serial number is. You'll notice that in our case, we use the service unit number for tracking, partly because nobody wants to put in 17 digit bins. Um, so that's up to you, but we generally use different numbers here just so we can put a simplified one in. On the right hand side, and we'll be talking about this more in other sessions, but we can assign a default meter code here we choose. And the default meter code could be uh, an odometer for miles, kilometers, it could be an hour meter. If you've got a truck with a pump on the back, you could have an odometer on the truck. You could have hours being tracked on the pump in the back. Okay. So we'll do a new here. And we'll just pick hours. Okay. And right now it's going to start with zero meter reading because it's brand new. We don't know what it is yet. So you'll notice this says now it says hour, and we could update the meter reading if we did know what, the, what it was, either a new or used one. Okay, now we need to assign a customer. So is this an internal customer, uh, uh, i.e. the company? So this could be a unit in the rental fleet, or it could be a delivery truck or a pickup truck that's being used for the parts department, whatever you like. And then the third type of equipment is it might be something that's owned by a customer. And if it's owned by the customer, did you sell it to them or are they just walking in with a unit you've never seen before? Okay, so now we're gonna come down here. We're going to pick open door technology. And if the, if the name and address had been filled in, it would have all defaulted in. Okay, now you can pick a location. So if you've actually got separate locations, maybe you've got multi-locations, you could pick that here. Okay, so you could pick a stocking location. So maybe it's kept at the East Warehouse. I drop that in and that's now I know where the unit is normally kept. But these could be the ship to codes for the customer address as well. So if they've got multiple sites and you're servicing equipment on site, as opposed to job, job site stuff. The job site, if it's a rental unit, as an example, the actual uh, address will be picked up off the rental contract. But if this is a piece of equipment that they have, say a forklift that just sits in their warehouse and you're providing service for it, then you can attach it to a specific uh, customer location if you like. There's also some basic equipment information. Who did you buy it from? What was the number? What was the name? Who's the manufacturer? Who is the model number? Um, we do have uh, some basic fields like that. We are choosing not to add more unless uh, some become obvious because we have something called attributes. And an attribute, you can create a long list of anything as specific as you want to get. So we added one in here called engine serial number. If you actually want to track the serial number on that skid steer, but to write down to the specific skid steer, you can create an attribute called engine serial number, copy and paste the, the, the serial number in there, and you'll always have a record of what that is. But it could be other things. It could be engine size, it could be fuel type, uh, could be manufacturer. We kind of had manufacturer on the other one, but sometimes they get a little more finely defined than that. So, okay, what's the model? Okay, uh, how? Uh, what's the dig depth on an excavator? You know, what's the height? What's the weight? What's the width? I mean, all those kind of things you can build into the attributes. Um, but it tends to be used more on the rental side, where if you go to rent for rent something to a customer, they want to know exactly what the requirements are. It's not quite as important on the service, but you can still do that if you like. And finally, under plan maintenance, we're going to set up a plan maintenance uh, group code here. And what that does is that dictates the service requirements for the unit. OK, we'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. And then finally, if you're going to manage the, the, the meters, you'll see your meter down here. And if you have the truck with the pump on the back that had two meters to manage, you would then see two lines down here.
Okay, each one of those, each one of the two two meters for that truck with the pump can drive their own maintenance requirements. Okay, you can drop pictures in here. You can do attachments, and then finally in the warranty, and this will be a subject of a separate video. But you can set up a multi-level warranty, and then when you go into a service ticket, whether it's a customer-owned unit or a company-owned unit, it will tell you whether there's any warranty available to claim expenses against. Okay, so we've now set up a service unit, and now we'll go take a quick look at how we set up the actual service requirements. We're going to search for service templates, and pick the list view, and these are all the service templates, which it's quite a few less than what you would have in a real system, uh, but these are all the different service templates we've set up for both repairs and for plan maintenance. So if you just look in this column called template type, you'll see there's one called plan maintenance and you have the others in this example are all called all, which means that they can be used for other, either repairs or plan maintenance. Plan maintenance just means that this is something that comes up in your long-term planning. It won't be available to anybody doing repairs. Okay, so you set these up. If I look at this six month inspection, okay, just briefly, Template type for skid steers. Here's the expected cost and price if I was selling this to a customer. And the, for now, the basic information that's in this is I got two hours of labor and I got one air filter that I'm going to change. It's going to cost me $75, but I'm going to charge the customer $192.80. Yeah, we'll see how he likes that. Anyway, up here under related, we have a checklist. We have a six month checklist set up here. And if I open that up, Let's just take a quick look at this. So for a six month checklist, I've got a header. So a six month, remember this is the setup screen. So I'll just expand it to full screen. So this is a setup screen. And so it looks a little clunky because it's got all these parameter columns in, but those will go away when you actually go to use it. But and initially I've got a note to the technician, a six month service is required before the unit can be used again. Okay, so Boolean. Is there any obvious damage? You want a yes, no answer out of, the, out of the person. If there is obvious damage, decide whether to add repairs to this service ticket or create a new one. Did you create a new service ticket? Okay, were fluid levels within factory norms? If you added oil, what type was it? You see how this says name value? Well, now you can. it'll pop up and it'll give you some choices of oil types that you used. Okay, how many quarts did you add? Well, that's not a restricted field, except they don't want you going over 10 quarts or liters, depending on what your system is tracking. So in this case, we had said quarts. So how many did you add? Well, it can be from 0 0.1 to 9.9. .9. Okay, were the hydraulic cylinders in working order? You know, did any of the tires be replaced? And if applicable, because maybe you have a tracked one, maybe you don't. Maybe you create a separate checklist for a tracked one. That's up to you. But the point about this, this one, this six months checklist, is you can make this as specific as you need to for your company, okay? So we've got that set up. And then finally, what we do is we go look at something called the maintenance group. And if you remember to what we were doing before, we were we had a skid steer maintenance group. So if we come down here and we say related plan maintenance schedules, now we look at all of the different options that are part of that planned maintenance. Okay. So we have one that is recurring period. Every three months, we're going to replace this air filter. Okay, on a return inspection means every time this comes back off rental. So obviously you're not going to use that for customer equipment, but every time a unit comes off rental, I have to do this particular service template. Uh, every three, uh, I've got three months on this one or usage. Okay, uh, I've got a six month, 500 hours of usage. So all of these can be set up. There's actually more choices not available, but all of these can set up be set up to automatically trigger in your planning. Uh, worksheet. Okay, so once you've got that set up, plan maintenance itself, other than the return uh, inspection, you have to use a planned worksheet to actually plan out the maintenance. And once you've done that, you either end up with a quote or a ticket that will show back here. So right now we've got two plan maintenance quotes. We've got 10 plan maintenance tickets already before we do any planning on the skid steer that we just created. So now we're going to go to plan maintenance, plan maintenance worksheet. So if you come into here, you'll notice that we're already on Bob's landscaping. His customer numbers dropped in over here. 
because we've picked him, if we want to, we can pick specific service locations. We could pick specific units. We could pick, pick specific groups, maintenance groups. So maybe you're doing a, a, a uh, skid steer loader. Maybe you're doing an excavator. I mean, you just figure out how you want to organize it. And you can do that. Uh, you can also do predictive usage. OK, so predictive usage, this is for rentals. So if you've got to, you know, and I went to a in the course apply to Bob. But the idea is that if it gets used for eight hours a day, um, then I want to be able to go out there. In fact, it can be used for the customer, I think, as well. But the idea is you're using it for eight hours a day. Then you you say, well, it needs an oil change in 500 hours. It's got 200 on now. That means that 300 divided by eight in 37 days or whatever that works out to. I'm going to have to go out there and do an oil change. So I believe it does work for customers as well, but that's what predictive usage is. So if I hit a calculate plan right now, I've got a cutoff date of 8622. And if I do that, nothing happens. Because you remember those various uh, service templates were based on either elapsed time or usage. And because we just created brand new ones and things, I'm not expecting to see anything pop up here. But if I come up this and up here to the top of these dates and put them a year out from where they were, and then I hit calculate plan. Then I'll see I've got, oh, skid steer loader number 338. I've got three things that I need to do. I need to do a six month inspection, an oil change and replace it in an air filter. So at this point in time, I have a few, few choices. I can defer some of these, I can delete them. They'll just come back the next time I do a plan. I can come down here and say, select more, pick just the specific ones I want, okay? Once I've picked one or more of them, then what I do is I say, okay, now I need to create a plan maintenance ticket or a plan maintenance quote. And a quote is just obviously what it sounds like. It's a quote, easily convertible to a ticket. And you, if you think about this, if you're servicing equipment for customers, you might come up and put, you know, every three months or something, you might do a batch for that customer and say, here's all your equipment that fell into this. And, and it looks like it needs, they need maintenance. Do you want to do them? And, and you would just send them off all these quotes. They would say, yep, happy with that. You would come back, convert those specific ones right directly in the quote screens. You would create those into tickets, and then you could go ahead and do the work. Us right now, we're going to create a ticket for this one. Take a second. If you need to, you can look at the service unit right there. So it says it's created one plan maintenance entry, and it's created one plan maintenance ticket. Okay. And so now that is in our system. And if we come back here, you can see this has gone from 10 to 11, come down to the last one. And it's for Bob's landscaping. There's a unit number. Here's a six month inspection. And if we drill down on a six month inspection, I can see that I've got my two hours of labor and my air filter. OK, so you can now edit this. You can capture signatures. You can send it off. Yeah, to for DocuSign if you need to, and you'll have warranty tracking. You can copy and paste comments. So we'll spend more time in other places talking about the tickets because the plan maintenance tickets really are exactly the same as the service tickets. It's just you plan to have them created, or they were triggered by a return inspection. So, okay, so that's all for today. Thank you very much.